Alright guys, it has been a tiny bit since I made a video. I've done a lot of updates since then and I've been messing around so I'll try to go over them as quickly as possible. I got my radiator in. I think I showed that before. I got the radiator in. I got, I hooped my heater things. I put a regular water neck on. I got a upper hose and everything that else fits and I'm starting to get my intercooler piping going from spare parts that I have. Another thing that I did was I got my alternator. I don't know if I covered all of that, but I got my alternator on. I got the Dirty Dingo idler relocation bracket here. What it does is there's too much flappiness from here to the crank and you'll skip it off of the alternator every now and then. So this is only 28 bucks and it takes the idler from there, puts it there on the back of the belt. So if you're not running power steering, it's pretty nice. It stops the belt from dancing all over and coming off the alt. So We've had a bunch of times where cars were just the setup like this without that idler and they throw a belt all day long like the Ventura and some other ones. You add that thing, no problem. So that's nice. I want to show you guys that. I wired up the alt. The alt's charging. The water pump's going. I wired up only the low speed on the fan. That's enough to control the shit out of the temperature. One interesting thing I did, you might notice that the wiring harness looks pretty clean in here, the wires and stuff. Other, I mean, these are just, whatever, I just tossed those in to get the alt working. And this is idle air control. Whoa! So, what the hell did I do? Well, I talked to my buddy Mike at EFI Source, and I put a gold box in this thing. The uh, MS3 gold box from EFI Source, so this is fully sequential box in here, and onboard SD card data logging. You can hook up a switch, or something to turn it on like temperature or throttle position or trans brake or whatever so I'm gonna do some crazy shit with this thing I'm gonna try to hook up as many things as I can the fan is already controlling the temperature perfectly the it's turning on the fuel pump it's doing a bunch of other shit I'm gonna wire it for boost control I'm gonna have it turn on the second part of the fuel pump for the holly so I'm gonna get fancy I'm gonna do all of that stuff and I got my cooling system no leaks or anything and mostly topped off and I can show you the I've been messing with I've never had really closed loop idle control on MS3 before so I have no wide band yet also so hopefully uh, what do we got here 156 degrees 12 volts got my shit wiring all over the place and we'll see what happens Closed loop idle and everything I got going pretty good. I learned a lot about today. Learned a lot about that today by myself. I just sat here and fucked with it endlessly. Uh, so we'll see how it does on cold start. Another thing I'm doing is that's a 02 or 01 Mustang GT master cylinder. And I started redoing all the brake lines because every brake line on this car is a rotted piece of shit. Uh, that's putting it nicely. Every line I touched and turned a nut on, it broke, it broke the line. The nut was rusted to the line, and it was so thin that it would just break <laughs> as soon as I tried to loosen it or tighten it. So that in itself is very disappointing. I still have the 40-pound injectors in the intake. I got to get the spacers and everything and put the 80s in this thing. Everything else, uh, I'm getting there slowly, but getting there. And then I think I'm going to have some people help me with these brake lines because, honestly, brakes are the bane of my existence. I fucking hate working on brakes. I don't know how I can reiterate that enough for you guys, but I can do them. But, man, I, I, I would rather do anything else and sit here and waste time and piss away everything till I have to work on these things because every car has... I mean, everything has gone really well with this vehicle, but every car has something that 
really fights you and it's the brakes on these things so I think I might have my friend has a lot of really nice high-end tools and he said he would help me so I normally don't have an issue with you know fixing a flare or putting a line lock in or something else but this shit is fighting me it's something awful I even bought that copper brake line that bends easy and flares easy it still seems like it's flaring like shit and then this fits this metric guy fits in here and then this is a metric to adapter here on the back it's actually bigger and I go and I start to thread this in and it fucking cross threads it I couldn't believe it so that just goes to show you I, went, I spent two hours on it the other day and got nowhere and just today I put the water neck on and then got these hoses on and everything else and topped off the coolant system and I can fire it and this, this has a three speed or two speed fan and on low it hits the low speed fan at 200 it immediately knocks the temp down to 190 and shuts off beautifully so that's working awesome this fan and rad have always worked great even in turbo cars and everything else so there's actually a bunch of nitrous outputs nitrous one and two and a couple of other things so I may actually wire the high speed to the fan to come on at like 210 if it ever gets that hot so we will see maybe I'll just wire the high speed on a switch and just crank the shit out of the high speed before I make a pass at the track or something else I don't know it would be pretty cool to just have it switched by the ECU and what's really neat is since the car has closed loop idle control and it's turning the fan on and off and everything else when the fan comes on you can barely tell it's just like a stock computer car the idle remains exactly the same the idle control is actually pretty nice so far and I barely have used it at all so it is working it is beneficial <laughs> the other throttle body I had a second this is the second throttle body I had on the car. The first one, which is over here in the pile or something somewhere, I don't know, over here. That guy, I was bottoming out the stepper motor, like it was at five steps, like you saw it was idling there at like 60 or 70 steps. And then uh, I had the other throttle body on and it would bottom out and it would still hang at like 900. Idle was hanging, so I don't know if that throttle body has a leak in it somewhere or if uh, leaking around the idle air control valve or TPS or something or the throttle body seal something is leaking I don't know that that throttle body would probably be good to just replace the idle air motor or maybe investigate a little bit the idle air motor is moving but the, it idles high as shit I don't know why so that would be a perfect candidate to fill and use for like micro squirt where there's nothing but you want it to idle about 900 with a raunchy cam and a TH400 so other than that I'm gonna measure I keep slacking uh, my brakes and other things. I gotta crawl under this car tonight and measure the drive shaft. I have uh, a guy that checks out my YouTube videos. He actually wants to build me a drive shaft and ship it to me. So that is outstanding and I'm going to take him up on that. And I'm gonna have a YouTube drive shaft in this car. So that'll be exciting and we can all see how it works out. Other than that, I think I covered all my bases. I even have the ECU turning on the fuel pump on and off and I noticed a bunch of times when I keyed the car off it kept running and I just like had to push the shit out of this and then it shut off so I think my ignition switch might actually be a little shitty I don't know we'll find out more as we go along but I figured you guys would think that's pretty exciting in the long run I would like to get a trans brake in this car and I can wire the micro not the micro this MS3 gold box from EFI I can wire that to the trans brake and it'll control the trans brake for me and I can even do internal bump box. You don't need to buy a bump box. You can bump the car in with the ECU, no extra boxes or anything. And then you can even set it up so that when you lift off your trans brake, that will control a boost controller directly. No fancy wiring, you just wire right to the boost controller. It'll control it. And you can run a routine where you can ramp boost in when you let go of the trans brake or any other trigger you can give it any one of the triggers but that's usually what you do is launch out La launch in is when you come on the brake and launch out so what you can actually do is set it up to internally data log in the SD card and you can say launch in data log for 30 seconds you can even give it a cutoff so you don't have aimlessly long data log files there's also a wire called data log in and you can actually just flip a switch and it'll data log the whole time the switch is up and you can set a time limit on that like 10 minutes or something if you forget the damn switch is on but what's pretty cool is you can set that trans brake button up and say launch in data log so it'll data log when you're on the trans brake and when you leave and then after 30 seconds it kills the data log and you can go back in and look at those logs and they're all you know first 30 seconds of your passes 
hopefully you're going faster than 15 seconds and you come up on the brake within five and you can adjust all of that but it'll be really cool to have all of that you don't have to have the laptop in the car or anything and then there's a million settings there's even traction control and everything you can think of and what was the one thing i was looking at something was really cool in here i forget i can't find it right now there's a boost by gear boost by vehicle speed boost by when you let go uh nitrous water injection high power time enrichment like if you're making a lot of power and over a certain amount of time you can add some more fuel you can add an oil pressure gauge and tell it to shut the motor off when there's not enough oil pressure uh there's an afr safety system where you can tell it if you're running over a pound of boost and your air fuel comes over a certain amount to you know fuel cut or kill spark or do whatever and it'll actually do air fuel safety so if something happens or your pump dies or your fuel line comes off and the car starts to go lean like if you target an 110 and you say 120 it's just fucking spark cut me so you can check your data log then and see that like your whole fuel line wasn't even connected or your second pump isn't working or your fuse is blown or something crazy so there's a lot of safety systems in the car you can even tell it to turn on a light and do all sorts of things so awesome i hope you see all of that and let me know if you have any questions i got my v-band on there from squeeze performance and i got my 90 and uh this uh what the hell is it <laughs> t-bolt clamp that fits the throttle bodies squeeze performance just got a whole shitload of those in so it's a little tight but it works it's not even tightened down yet but you can just thread it on there and then we'll see i should be making boost sometime soon and hopefully get some brake lines on but Everything else is doing really good. Hope you enjoyed the update.